This is Dave with the ESN, and today I am going to go over um, teardown of the Pronto Bar. Uh, this video is mainly for technicians that are out there in the field that haven't seen this uh, model from New Ova Seminelli yet. Um, if you are not a technician, I highly recommend that whenever you're doing work on your Pronto Bar that you actually hire a qualified technician to do any work. So right now I'm going to go over uh, most of your service calls are going to be the brew unit, uh, replacing O-rings or possibly springs. Uh, so to get at the brew unit, obviously we want to make sure the machine is off. And there is also a main switch underneath on the left hand side. We'll go ahead and turn that off. Now we can open up the machine. We'll pull the drip tray out with our ground bucket. And you see the upper piston here. Uh, this will slide right out. And you can completely disassemble this. But to get at the rest of the brew unit, what we're going to need to remove is this panel right here. And it is three screws, two screws you just need to loosen. There's this one we're going to loosen. There is one right behind, right here. And then the third one we're going to remove is over here. So two, you're just loosening. Yeah. What's two. the one that you don't, which is the one that you have to take off? This, this bottom one. Gotcha. Here. Okay. And then that just slides out of place. Nice. And then here we have the rest of our brew unit, our upper and lower springs, which will, after so many cycles, need to be replaced. There is an O-ring up in this, this jam nut that needs to be replaced. And of course, and the customer can replace this O-ring here. We just pull our pin, slide our piston out, disconnect our tube, and then of course we can replace the O-ring, replace the screen if needed. There's an extra O-ring in the machine, just hanging right here for the customer. And also, if you have the Easy Cream, this is where your pump and your adjustment screw, there is a hole in the front panel for the adjustment screw for your air. That's right there. But your pump is back in here. So if for some reason it is not producing any air frothing, then that would be one of the things to look for. So now we're going to go over taking off our side and back access panels. So our right side access panel accesses all the solenoid valves. Our left side over here will access all the control boards. And our back will give us access to take another panel out to get access, partial access to our boilers and also gives us access to the, the mains valve and our flow meter. Okay, so to remove our side access panels, uh, both panels are exactly the same, they're just opposite. So you're gonna machine off, open up your front door, take out the tray, grounds tray and grounds drawer. And for our right side side panel, we have four screws we need to remove. The first two are in the front here, and those you want to remove first. And 
the left hand side panel is exactly the same just opposite it's these two screws that you're going to remove so to continue so basically this panel is going to drop down and out so there's two screws up here by the rail ground connected to the panel and obviously on this side we have access to all of our solenoid valves our pump so on the inside of the panel there is a legend here of telling you which valve is which uh, of course we got a brew valve down here we've got our auto level fill valve right here Etc. 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 We got hot water valves, steam valves. Uh, well, couple, that's nice. A couple of these valves aren't utilized because they, uh, for the um, uh, one step, uses some of these valves. And this, and this is... is just a two step machine with just a uh, auto steam. In this case, it's the uh, easy crane. So this is the left-hand side panel, which gives us access to our main circuit board, um, capacitors for the grinders, and here's a legend for the circuit board. We install our two uh, top screws first. If you notice, the panel did go from the bottom up, and there was a third set pin right in here for the top. And then we would put our two front screws in. So to take off the, the back panel, I would take your rail off and try not to lose these little <laughs> rubber inserts. Like I just dropped one on the ground. And there is just two screws on the top. They, uh, for the steam boiler, they, they sent an extra thermal fuse. Uh, these commonly go bad through time. There's no rhyme or reason when they go out and how long they last. I've had some last uh, only eight months and I've had others last years. So do you um, put that on your preventative maintenance list for, this, for the yes. Pronto Bar? Okay. Yes, I, would, I re would replace it every time you do a preventive maintenance uh, when you're in the back of the machine here. Tip of the week, yeah. So here again, uh, the bottom has these two holes, which you have two pegs right here that the holes are going up into. Here you have your mains valve, your water, incoming water supply, and there's your flow meter right here. Uh, to have access to your boilers, there's um, two screws. Okay. The bottom screw you just loosen, and, and the top screw you remove. You now have partial access to your boilers. To gain complete access to your boilers, you really need the top removed, which we'll go over next. To remove your your top. You're going to need to remove both hoppers and to do that you need to open up your front panel, close your hopper slides, and remove the thumb screw. One for each hopper.
at the top now and to remove the top there's four allen screws that will need to be removed As you can see, this model can be plumbed or as a pour over, but you would have to order it specifically as a pour over. So now that we have the top off, we have a little bit better access at, at our, our brew boiler and our steam boiler. Um, you still may want to go ahead and take the, uh, this top bracket off, which is just four Phillips screws. You said the, the screws are right here. One, two, there's a third one, fourth one right back here. Yeah. So you can remove this bracket and have a little bit better access. So in general, super automatics in, in some cases have gotten a bad rap. And I think a lot of that has to do with um, making sure that you have the right service company uh, servicing your equipment. Because not only should they know how to service it, they should know uh, what the machine can and cannot do. So with any super automatic or any machine, especially the more complex they are, especially in temperature profiling or uh, pump brewing profiling, uh, it's vitally important that the, the uh, service company knows how to do all of that on the machine. And how you're going to know that is generally if they're selling you the machine, they're going to know. So. Uh, super automatics are no different than any other machine. If it's set up properly, they produce an awesome cup of coffee. And if the customer is trained right in maintaining that, and then obviously if the customer is hiring the service company to do the maintenance, there's no reason why the machine can continually forever producing a great cup of coffee. As usual, if you have any questions, give me a call at the Espresso Service Network. Mm -hmm.